All right guys, so I've got a big old back strap from a bull elk here. And on today's field tips, I'm gonna show you how to remove the silver skin or the sinew and get this thing prepped for either going into the freezer or on the grill. So stay tuned. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is when you remove a back strap from an elk or deer, moose, anything, doesn't matter, they're all put together the same. Oftentimes there's going to be kind of two different pieces of meat and you've got the the back strap proper and then you've got this extra little piece that kind of wraps around uh, and towards the uh, the neck of the elk or underneath the shoulder which is going to be this end. Uh, this big fat end down here this is going to be the the end of the back strap that attaches down by the animal's hip. And so the first thing I'm going to do is just take off this extra little piece of meat that uh, that kind of wraps around here. So what I'm doing is just taking, you can pull on this a little bit and that stretches that connective tissue and then you just take and and cut that connective tissue and this little piece will fall right off. Now once you have it all laid open from the underside, you can flip this over and right here, this muscle is going to lay on the top of this, this little piece of hair. The, this muscle is going to lay on the top of this silver skin and that's why we have to take this piece off so that we can expose this silver skin or sinew so we can remove that as well. So what I'm going to do is take a sharp knife and this is the... Uh, uh, the big knife off of my buckboard from one of my Orions and basically just run it right along the sinew here and take that muscle right off the top. Try not to cut your sinew because it'll be a lot easier to remove now that you have uh, have it all exposed and in one piece. Take any extra meat and just scrape it off and that way the sinew is going to lay flat on the table and that'll come into play here in just a sec. Alright now on this big end here I've got another little piece uh, right in here that I'm going to go ahead and trim up. Set that to the side. Alright, so now what we have is a big old back strap with the silver skin exposed along the entire thing. So now, I'm just going to flip this thing over and take a big fillet knife. And we're just going to fillet this thing just like a fish. Now I'm going to start here at the fat end and I'm going to work down towards uh, the small end here. Now what I like to do is just go ahead and cut, cut down through there and I'm going to move this over a little bit actually so it's near the edge. Cut down through there and expose that silver skin. So now what we can do is just go ahead and start filleting. And you need to hold, hold that sinew, or hold that silver skin. All right, there you go. Nice, uh, cleaned up, no silver skin on the back, on the top side. Do still have a little bit hair on the bottom side. And for this, just stick the point of the knife under there and just slowly work this down. 
this bottom stuff is not as easy to get off as the, the actual back sinew. If you kind of lift up on your knife, you stick it underneath that, that sinew, lift up on your knife and then tilt the blade down, you can avoid cutting a lot of the meat off and just get the sinew, which is exactly what we want. All right, so now that we've got the silver skin all removed from here, you could go ahead and stake this thing and butterfly it if you wanted to. Now, when I, um, when I put backstrap in the freezer, I don't generally cut it into steaks. Uh, if I want steaks, I'll do that after I take it out of the freezer. And the reason I do that is because it just gives you more options when you take it out. You know, if you cut it into steaks now, then freeze it, you're pretty much limited to steaks uh, when you take it out. Um, but if you leave it in big hunks, you could do multiple things with it. You could wrap this thing in bacon, throw it on the grill, and then slice it super thin, which is amazing. Uh, you could steak it, you could uh, cut it into shish kebabs, do whatever you want to. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this thing into about 10 inch chunks. And then those chunks are gonna go into the freezer. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to uh, do steaks and butterfly steaks. We'll actually uh, have a piece of this for dinner tonight. So I like to cut mine pretty thick. I'll cut my steaks initially about two and a half inches thick, which is something like that, and then butterfly it down the center and lay that thing open so you've got a much bigger steak. Now I'm just gonna take my knife, go right down the center of it and cut almost all the way through. Go a little more in the center. And then lay that thing open. And now you've got a nice, big, fat, butterflied steak ready to go on the grill. So I'm gonna cut a couple more of those and that is what is for dinner. So this is a bull elk, it's a big backstrap. If you're dealing with something like whitetail or something with a, a smaller backstrap, you're gonna end up obviously with a lot smaller stakes. Uh, but one thing that you can do to increase the size of those stakes is instead of cutting this thing directly across the grain, just cut it at a little bit of a bias. And then that's gonna kind of lay those stakes over a little bit and increase some of that surface area. But, uh, Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut off another big piece of this. And then that's gonna go into the freezer hole. Uh, this little end piece, you know, you, you could use that as shish kebabs or um, fajitas or whatever you want. Same with some of this other stuff. Just all this stuff that you peeled off uh, before we started removing the silver skin, just uh, remove the silver skin from that and it's still very tender uh, cuts of meat. And so you can do things like shish kebabs or fajitas um, or pretty much anything with it. The dogs like when it's meat cutting time. They hear me sharpening the knives and they come running. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap some of this meat up. Now, I just use regular old waxed butcher paper or freezer paper just like you see here. Uh, I've done it this way for a very long time and I've never had any trouble with meat getting freezer burned or going bad in the freezer. Um, a lot of guys will wrap it, will either vacuum pack it or wrap it in cellophane and then wrap it in butcher paper. Like I said, I've never found any reason to wrap it in uh, uh, 
uh, cling wrap or cellophane before you do this. Now with that said, I, meat doesn't sit in my freezer for very long. It doesn't sit in my freezer for over a year. Uh, we eat what we kill in a year, we'll eat it that year. So anyway, I'm gonna show you just a quick easy way to wrap this stuff airtight so uh, it doesn't go bad. Uh, all I'm gonna do is cut off a square like this. Now when I lay it on the table, it's gonna be at a diamond towards me. And I'm gonna take a piece of meat, put it on that paper, and just a little bit towards me. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take this uh, tag in that I've got here closest to me. I'm gonna roll it over and I'm gonna roll the meat with it. And I'm gonna take that and just tuck it under there and roll it so it sits on top of that piece. Now I'm gonna take these end pieces here, fold them in, bring this towards me. And if you need to, you might need to uh, Fold this in so that your tag end ends up in the middle of your paper. Roll that over and throw a piece of tape on there and that's done. Now the trick to wrapping in butcher paper so that you don't get freezer burn is to make sure everything's wrapped in two layers. So the way that I wrapped it, uh, I don't have to take another piece of paper and wrap the whole thing again. I cut my paper large enough and the meat was the right size so that when I folded everything in, there's two layers of paper covering everything. And do that one more time. Now again, this piece is, so if you drew a line from this corner to this corner, I'm gonna slide this meat down uh, a little bit below that line. So now, I can take and slide that up under there so that it's pinching it and I'm gonna just roll that right on top. Now you've got this trapped under there. Now just take this piece and it helps if you take this corner and bring it to you a little bit and that brings this into more of a point. So bring that to you. Same thing over here, bring that to you a little bit. Push that down and just continue to roll. Now that is a professional looking wrap right there. Now I'll just take you a piece of freezer tape. Put you a piece of tape on there and write out what it is and then the freezer it goes. Alright guys, so that's going to do it for this week. Uh, we're going to be doing some more home butchering in future videos. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click that little uh, subscribe button and then click the little bell icon. That's going to send you a notification when I upload a new video. Uh, but with that, uh, you can check out some of my other content on Instagram. You can follow me at Clay Hayes Hunter. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, and check out my website. It's twistedstave.com. I've got a mailing list there that you might want to sign up for. Uh, I send out uh, notifications and blog posts, uh, updates, things like that. So with that, uh, good luck this season, and we'll see you next time.